Hello and welcome to Euphoria TV Breaking News. My name is Dr. David Bull. I'm a medical journalist and I'm delighted to be your host for this, our first show of October 2020. Now, this programme is dedicated to the management of asthma and the challenges that clinicians face on a daily basis to provide the best treatment for their patients. Over the next few minutes, we'll be talking about the latest European guidelines for asthma, the very real obstacles that clinicians face, the current game changers in asthma care, and we'll be staring into our crystal ball to see what the future of asthma care will look like. In a minute, I'll be getting expert advice from Professor Susanna Diamont from the Netherlands and Professor Leif Bjerma from Sweden. As we all know, asthma is a common condition which produces a significant workload for general practice, outpatient clinics and inpatient admissions. It's vital, therefore, that these patients are managed effectively to reduce morbidity and prevent mortality. To discuss the best way to manage these patients, I'm delighted to be joined live from the Netherlands now by Professor Susanna Diamont. She is a pulmonologist and clinical pharmacologist and past guest professor of asthma and allergy research at Scania University Hospital in Lund in Sweden. She is also professor at the University of Leuven in Belgium. Susanna, it is great to see you. Thank you so much for taking the time. Let me start by asking you about the management pathway of asthma and when you consider various things. Particularly, I'm interested in biologicals. When would you consider using them and what should clinicians expect? Thank you very much, David, uh, for, for this, this nice introduction and also for posing this very important question. So in general, according to guidelines, patients with severe uncontrolled type two asthma could nowadays be treated with targeted biologics. Um, of course, it's important to, to see what patient is suitable. So first, of course, you have to determine the right uh, endotype or phenotype, if you wish, and other things like comorbidities. But in general, those on step four, five, uncontrolled severe asthma with the right phenotype and endotype would qualify for the currently registered type two uh, targeted uh, biologics. So we're going to talk about the Euphoria Masterclass in just a moment, but from your point of view, how does the holistic approach fit in the treatment of asthma? I think it's uh, very important to consider every individual patient. So that would be the holistic approach. And this approach is also very nicely reflected, not only in the guidelines, because there you have to see the patient as a whole to, to consider the treatable traits, to consider the comorbidities, so not only looking at asthma per se, but this aspect has been very nicely reflected and, as to say, captured in the present masterclass. Now, obviously, that Euphoria Masterclass is taking place on the 9th and 10th of November, and it's on practice-based treatment options and outcomes with biologicals in CRS, WNP and asthma. So the big question, I suppose, is why would you encourage the respiratory care community to attend? Yes, uh, thank, you. thank you, David. And I think this is a good question because uh, I'm, of course, a bit biased, having organized this together with Euphoria, with Klaus Bachert, and myself mainly in the program committee. But we feel that it's very, very important to make this translation, if you wish, from the guidelines where they encourage us to treat the patient as a whole, to, to put together the most important comorbid type two inflammatory diseases. So being severe asthma with concomitant chronic rhinositis with nasal polyps. So that is in fact what is reflected in this masterclass. And the masterclass is set up in a multi, uh, multidisciplinary setting. So it is like in a hospital that we would discuss the patient from both ends of the respiratory tract. So first we have a united part where we start off, we kick off with the united airway concept and the type 2 inflammation. And then we split into two very concise 
updated lectures from world experts and after that the knowledge that we will just gain from these experts will be implemented into individual patient cases. So in this way we would be able in a very concise way to get the high-tech and uh, high-end knowledge from world experts and to interact with them. So I think that is very unique because it's short, it's interactive and it's up to date. Well, it sounds very immersive and well worth attending. Finally, let me ask you, though, what are your thoughts on Euphoria's initiative on presenting GINA, EPOS 2020 and the Euphoria guidelines in India and Asia in the autumn of this year? I assume it's pretty unique. Yes, indeed, uh, David. This is very unique. And why is it unique? Because it all combines not only all these different guidelines, but also experts from all ends of the world. And it's the first virtual symposium where all these experts can unite and discuss the, the, the strengths and the drawbacks and the potential challenges, how to implement and also uh, the effect of implementation of these guidelines in patient care. So we look very much forward to have this uh, in front of us and uh, to be able to, to unite everybody on these guidelines. Well, I wish you the very best of luck with it. Professor Diamond, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much, David. It was a pleasure. So now let's hear from our second expert based in Sweden. I'm absolutely thrilled to be joined now by Professor Leif Bjerma, who is Professor of Allergy and Asthma Research at the University of Lund. Uh, Leif, it's absolutely great to see you too. Tell me, what in your experience are the current game changers in the field of asthma care? Uh, the current game changer is definitely the introduction of uh, what we call the concept personalized medicine. Uh, and then, of course, the new repertoire of treatment that we have, uh, uh, different biologics. I mean, in terms of the treatment using biologics, we heard a little bit, bit about that earlier. But, I mean, really, this has revolutionized treatment, hasn't it? Definitely. I mean, we have uh, different treatment goals now. We have better and um, we have more ambitions. We don't accept to have patient uncontrolled. We want to improve our uh, our care. And I think uh, biologics has opened up a completely new window there. I mean, you talk very much about personalized medicine, and I assume from my understanding that using biologics, it's really vital that you team the right patient with the right therapy. Absolutely. And um, one, uh, one problem is that the number of patients with, for example, severe asthma is not uh, very high. It's less than 4%. And that means that you need to share experience with other researchers and other doctors in the field and uh, thereby um, try to find profiles that benefit from a certain treatment uh, alternative. And uh, that also opened up that we need to have both national and international collaboration around these patients. So when you talk about actually speaking to your colleagues and sharing your experiences, what do you believe are the biggest challenges then in asthma care when you do speak to your colleagues? Well, it's to, um, first of all, to, the, the concept of treatment today is different than yesterday. Uh, we are more directed towards uh, what kind of inflammatory profile do we have, what kind of clinical profile with different comorbidities do we have, and then uh, see what is the best treatment modality for just that type of patient. And um, so here we need to communicate. So uh, it's not like the single doctor is sitting by himself and making decisions. Now we have to, to share experience with the, in between each other. So perhaps I can end by asking you a very tricky question. When you delve into your crystal ball, what do you predict the future of asthma care will look like? We, in the future, we will strive more for disease modification in the long-term perspective. Uh, today, uh, if you want to introduce a drug on the market, it needs to be cost-effective if you look at one-year perspective. I mean, reduce the number of exhibitions. In the future, we will sort of say that, okay, if I treat the patient that is uncontrolled today and I sort of modify the disease, then there will be less comorbidity, less complications in, say, 10, 15, 20 years' time. And um, that will 
be a, sort of a truly saving for the society and also improve the quality of life and health perspective for that sort of patient. So that's what I believe in. The other thing is that the biologics will be much more cheaper than they are today. Today we are upscaling laboratory modules and it's very expensive to produce biologics. In the future, we will have a cheaper way to, to produce them. We will have um, the ability to combine uh, biologics, more than one. But that means that we can also sort of uh, tailor how to treat different inflammatory profiles, not with one, but maybe with more biologics. Well, it sounds like the future is very bright, not just for clinicians, but obviously for patients as well. Professor Leif Biyama, thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you. Well, that brings our show on the challenges in asthma care and the best way forward to a close. I'd like to thank my two guests, Professor Zuzana Diamont and Leif Biyama, for their fascinating insight and their expertise. Now, don't forget you can find more information and register for the Euphoria meetings on the euphoria.eu website, where you can also sign up to receive the latest news via email. You can also follow us on Twitter. The address is at Euphoria. But that is it for this show. See you soon, and thanks for watching.